Senator, let's move beyond process and polls for just a minute. If you become the president of the United States, so many Americans are suffering. Americans, America is not yes. respected abroad like it once was. We have more enemies, ISIS, the mullahs in Iran, radical Islamists. How will things change and how quickly does that occur? Uh, you know, I think the change begins overnight. There are three key issues I think that this general election comes down to. Jobs, freedom, and security. With regard to jobs, for seven years we've been stuck in stagnation. I want to speak for a minute to the single mom who's right now working two, three jobs at 28, 29 hours a week because your hours have been forcibly reduced because Obamacare kicks in at 30 hours a week. I, I want to speak to the working men and women, to, to, to the plumbers and electricians and truck drivers, to the men and women with, with calluses on your hands that are stuck in stagnant wages where your wages don't go up even though your expenses and cost of living go up. I want to talk to the young people who are coming out of school with student loans up to your eyeballs and, and yet you're afraid, am I going to get a job? What does the future hold? This can and will change. The key to the economy, the heart of the economy is small businesses. We need to take the small businesses and unleash small businesses. If I'm elected president, we will repeal every word of Obamacare. And if I'm elected president, we'll pass a simple flat tax and abolish the IRS. And those two things will unleash small businesses to create millions of high paying jobs. We're going to pull the EPA back, pull the government regulators back so small businesses can expand. That's going to raise wages. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to secure the border. We're going to end illegal immigration. We are going to cut off taxpayer funds for sanctuary cities. We are going to end welfare for people who are here illegally. And the effect of that is going to expand jobs for American citizens and raise wages. We're going to have young people coming out of school with two, three, four, five job offers. That's what we can do. And we've done it before. We need a president who understands the principles, how you allow small businesses to create jobs. And we need a president with the strength to, to follow through who has a record of following through on his commitments on liberty. We are going to defend the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Yeah. How long does that take for all those people that you mentioned, the plumber, the contractor, the people with calluses on yes. their hand? Yes. The, you know, I spent 20 years of my life as a blue collar worker. How long is it going to take yeah. for them to to get out of the, the misery and the suffering? Unfortunately, they've been experiencing. Well, there are a lot of things that will change overnight. So on day one, I have pledged to do five things. Number one, rescind every single illegal and unconstitutional executive action taken by President Obama. That includes President Obama's illegal amnesty and we'll begin enforcing the immigration laws on day one. The more you enforce immigration laws, the more you're going to see jobs available for American citizens and wages start to go up. The second thing I pledge to do on day one is instruct the Department of Justice to open an investigation into Planned Parenthood and to prosecute any and all can do on the very first day in office and I intend to. The third thing I intend to do is instruct every federal agency that the persecution of religious liberty ends that day. We've seen Obama abusing executive power on January 20th, 2017. All of that comes to an end. The fourth thing that I will do on the first day in office is rip to shreds this catastrophic Iranian nuclear deal. A nuclear Iran is the greatest national security threat facing America, and a strong commander-in-chief will change how America deals with the world. And the fourth thing I'll do on day one is begin the process of, uh, the fifth thing rather, is begin the process of moving the American embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Now, all of those you can do immediately. I also will instruct the Department of Education that Common Core ends today. All of that can happen instantaneously. The next step is pulling back regulations, pulling back the EPA, pulling back the BLM, pulling back uh, the CFPB, all of the government regulators. A president can do that immediately. Now, what takes longer is passing legislation and the two big legislative initiatives I'm campaigning on are repealing every word of Obamacare and passing a simple flat tax and abolishing the IRS. That will take time, but I hope to have both of those accomplished the first year in office, and that's where my energy, my time is going to be devoted, is, is taking that case to the people and coming out of the general election with a mandate. If we do that, if we repeal Obamacare, the economy will explode. If we pass a flat tax, 
we will see millions and millions of high-paying jobs, and that can happen within the first year or two of the administration. Get the federal government off of the backs of small businesses, and we will see economic growth go through the roof. Do you see, a, well, one last foreign policy question, do you see ISIS yep. as a lifelong fight, radical Islam? for Boko Haram, uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, Hamas, you know, do, is this a lifelong fight we have with them or can it be won and how long does that fight take? That's my last question. Uh, look, radical Islamic terrorism may well be a very, very long fight. I don't believe ISIS will be a long fight. If I am commander in chief, we will utterly destroy ISIS. ISIS has declared their caliphate. We will go in, we will use overwhelming air power. We will carpet bomb them into oblivion. We will arm the Kurds who are the boots on the ground and we can and will defeat ISIS. Now defeating ISIS is also a powerful blow against radical Islamic terrorism. Right now ISIS is, is benefited by the perception that they're winning. If I am commander-in-chief, every militant across the globe will know that if they go and join ISIS, if they take up arms against America, if they wage jihad, they are signing their death warrants. That's some of how you beat them. More broadly, the way you beat radical Islamic terrorism is the same way Reagan beat Soviet communism. You restart the economy through tax reform and regulatory reform. You get millions of high paying jobs that generates trillions in tax revenue. You rebuild the military. I am going to rebuild this military so that it is the mightiest military, remains the mightiest military on the planet. And let me say one final thing. To all of our soldiers and sailors and airmen and marines who've had a commander in chief that doesn't have your back, that sends you in to conflict with rules of engagement that tie your arms behind your back, that will end on January 2017. As commander in chief, I will have your back. Senator Ted Cruz, as always, thank you for being with us. Good luck tomorrow, Super Tuesday. We appreciate uh, all your time that you've given us up to this point, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks.